Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. This show is sponsored by Dixon's Chemist, who are the experts in LDN and associated treatments in the UK. Dixon's Chemist are the most cost effective for LDN in all forms within the UK and Europe, maintaining safety standards far in excess of what is required. Why would you choose to get your LDN from anywhere else? Call 0141 404 6545 today to speak to their LDN experts. I'd like to welcome back Dr. Pamela Smith, who's been on our radio show before. She is an amazing doctor, speaker. She travels the world lecturing. She's absolutely amazing. And she's also now um, one of our advisors for the LDN Research Trust. Thank you for joining us today, Pamela. Thank you so much. I'm very glad to be here. So you were a speaker at the last conference as well, and I'm hoping we will have you next time. What have you learned about LDN since the last conference? Well, it's interesting that you would ask that, because when you look at overall health, there's one key thing, no matter how old the patient is, it really has to do with inflammation. And right now, everybody in the entire world has been interested in looking at the immune system. So I'd like to take this time to go through seven ways to really help the immune system. And all of them in the final analysis have to do with inflammation. And at the end, we'll look a little bit at LDN. Wonderful. Okay. So tip number one, when we look at ways for helping the body stay healthy is, of course, stress. You know, stress is a main issue. Whether we're talking about today's world or whatever, everyone is stressed. Part of it is we just overbook. And it really is a time when we need to settle down. Because when people are stressed, it increases their risk of many diseases. Not only does it compromise the immune system, but when the patient is stressed, it increases their risk of other diseases. So what are they? What does the medical literature actually say? Consequences of stress, compromised immune system, bone breakdown, fatigue, irritability, sugar cravings, so people don't eat correctly, shakiness between meals, confusion, memory not as sharp. I spoke at the last conference on LDN and memory. When you're stressed, low energy, night sweats, binge eating, increases blood pressure, cholesterol, triglycerides, blood sugar. It increases infection rate, so it compromises the immune system, thin skin, easy bruising, muscle weakness, weight gain around the middle, sleep disturbances. I mean, it causes many things when people stay stressed. So it's one of those things that you kind of have to let go and let the world just go around. There's a poem by one of my favorite poets, Carl Sandburg. And I love this poem. Time is the coin of your life. It is the only coin you have. Only you can determine how it will be spent. Be careful lest you let other people spend it for you. And I think that's thing, one thing we really have to be aware of, is not let other people spend it for us. If you look at the actual statistics, it's really crazy when it comes to stress. 
So I'm going to spend a little extra time on stress because there's an actual study in Alternative Medicine Review in 2009. As many as 75% to 90% of visits to primary care doctors worldwide are related to stress. And there's several studies showing that chronic stress has been shown to contribute to accelerated aging and premature death. So part of this is through compromising the immune system. So number one, we need to de-stress because the immune system gets compromised and we become inflamed. Tip number two, alcohol. When you drink a lot of alcohol, the body becomes inflamed, the immune system becomes compromised. Moderation is the key to health. How about when it comes to sleep? Sleep is very, very important. And there's some interesting things to look at when you look at sleeping patterns. If you don't sleep well, you become inflamed. So what should we look at when it comes to sleep? One thing is when are we actually going to sleep? It's very important that people go to bed by 11 p.m. and they do not get up before 5 a.m. If they get up too early, it changes their circadian rhythm, it compromises their immune system, and it causes inflammation. So a study in the Iranian Journal of Public Health showed disturbance of the circadian rhythm and its causes increase the incidence of psychological diseases like depression, also increases the rate of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. What is one major root cause of all those diseases besides not sleeping well? Inflammation, because it really does come down to inflammation. Of course, melatonin, the sleeping hormone, is very important. It regulates sleep, but it also builds the immune system. And if you don't have enough melatonin, you can end up inflamed. So how do people become low in melatonin? Alcohol, caffeine, electromagnetic fields, tobacco, and of course, the aging process itself. What's the next tip? have a healthy eating program. When you eat too much sugar, then the body becomes inflamed. And the studies have shown that when people eat too much sugar, it feeds cancer cells, it affects the youthfulness of the skin, it obviously promotes tooth decay, causes weight gain, it increases the risk of bowel disease, if people have too much sugar, it can cause arthritis, lead to yeast infections, gallstone formation, heart disease, kidney stones. I mean, it's much more than I would have ever thought with sugar because it causes inflammation. It can exacerbate MS, causes insulin resistance and drives up blood sugar, decreases growth hormone when you eat sugar, the hormone that keeps us from aging as quickly. Sugar can increase blood pressure, can change the structure of proteins. It impairs the structure of DNA. It affects eyesight, can cause cataracts, free radical production, fatty liver. I mean, I could go on all day what sugar does. It increases fluid retention, causes constipation. It decreases tendon function and repair. It negatively affects memory. It can cause depression. It really changes the fermentation of the gut. It causes platelet adhesiveness, and there's a lot of hidden sugars. People don't think about it, but ketchup is one half sugar. A lot of luncheon meats have sugar. Breading usually contains sugar. Salad dressings contain sugar. So there's many different hidden sugars as well. So again, 
you become inflamed. If the gut's not healthy, you're not healthy. And many patients, when they don't eat right, their gut becomes unhealthy and it becomes inflamed. If people don't have enough digestive enzymes, in other words, they don't chew their food, then it becomes a problem. We become so fast nowadays that we basically just bolt down our food. Every doctor in the world will tell you that you should chew each bite 20 times. And it's so important when it comes to the immune system because 70% of the immune system is in the gut. So if the gut is not healthy, again, you're not healthy. So there's a lot of reasons for poor digestion, but one of them is just not chewing food well. People should have two bowel movements a day. When a patient says to me, oh, I only use the bathroom twice a week, then I know they're not healthy. Their immune system's compromised and they are inflamed. There's many reasons why people have poor digestion. Stress is one of them. Certainly eating poorly is another. So digestion is important. Digestive enzymes people may need. Some people may need more acid than less. So sometimes people think they have reflux because they have too much acid. 40% of people have reflux because they have too little. There's many nutrients that are important for the gut. Butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid. One of the very common things that I see low in people. So people always ask, what happens if your gut's not healthy? You get something called dysbiosis. So what are the actual symptoms? Nausea, belching and bloating, heartburn, abdominal pain, cramping and abdominal distension, depression, anxiety, gas, halitosis. You can even have symptoms outside the gut when the gut's not healthy, like frequent urination, muscle aches and pains, memory not as sharp, heart racing, skin rashes, seizures. So there's many reasons why the gut's not healthy. So everybody, in order to have no inflammation or decrease inflammation, and for everybody, to have an immune system that is improved, important to see a functional medicine practitioner and have a gut health test done to make sure the gut's healthy. I'm going to be giving a seminar this year that I'm writing now on the skin. And it's fascinating when you look at psoriasis and acne and rosacea. They're all related to inflammation and a gut that's not healthy. So we keep coming back to the same subjects related to all of this. Inflammation, compromised immune system, because the gut is not perfect. And then people get what we lovingly call leaky gut syndrome. So when we look at all of these things to maintain the immune system, decrease sugar, fix the gut. One I think we don't talk a lot about is dehydration. When people don't drink enough water, they become dehydrated. So if people have normal kidney function, they don't have congestive heart failure or fluid overload, they should drink one half their body weight in ounces every day. If they're exercising, they need to drink more. And then, of course, another key is exercise when it comes to building your immune system. True exercise is working out and doubling your pulse for 20 minutes, three to four times a week. If you exercise more than that, it would be aggressive exercise, which can cause inflammation. And if you aggressively exercise, the body does need more nutrients. 
You have more free radical production with AIDS. So starting at the age of 50, people need more lipoic acid and coenzyme Q10, more fueling sources. But even if you're 27, if you're exercising seven days a week, you would need more nutrients like coenzyme Q10 and lipoic acid. Another thing when we look at the immune system causes inflammation. One way to build your immune system is if you smoke to stop smoking because forever it seems like we've known that smoking is not healthy for us, but people do smoke. So when it comes to the immune system, there's really two lines of defense, innate immunity and adaptive. Well, what do those big words mean? Innate immunity is the first immunological, non-specific mechanism for fighting against pathogens. So it's your rapid immune response that occurs immediately. The adaptive immunity, and we've been hearing about this on the news with coronavirus, is different. It's an antigen-dependent, antigen-specific. So it has the capacity to remember if you've had an infection before. So this is all going to become more important over time. Again, if the immune system is compromised, one reason it is is inflammation. So what are some causes of inflammation? Microbial infections, surgery, physical agents, chemicals, high blood pressure, Estrogen has 400 functions in the body for women. It's very important that women have normal estrogen. But as they age, when we replace it, we do not give it by mouth. Giving it by mouth causes an inflammatory response. If we put it on the skin, that's not the case. Again, smoking can cause inflammation. Free radical production, allergies, obesity. So what's the best way in the world to decrease inflammation? Do all the things that we've just discussed, but I love low-dose naltrexone for decreasing inflammation. It's all about balance. And so when it comes to the immune system, if it's not healthy, then you get infection. If the immune system's not healthy, then you can over produce the immune system where you get an autoimmune disease. So you don't want the immune system to be overstimulated. And there's three things I always do when it comes to an autoimmune disease. And there's now 105 autoimmune diseases. Number one, take the patient off of gluten. Number two, for autoimmune diseases, fix the gut. And number three, low-dose naltrexone. And I've been really very blessed to be able to help my patients by using LDN, otherwise known as low-dose naltrexone. Not only is it an anti-inflammatory, but it has a positive effect on the immune system. In fact, it's an immune modulator. It also helps with pain control. So there's many effects that it has on the immune system when it comes to regulating T cells and B cells. So in low doses, it helps with the stimulation of T and B cells and natural killer cells as well. So low-dose naltrexone has many actions. It increases the enhancement of the immune function. It's anti-inflammatory. It helps even heal corneal ulcers. Studies have shown that it helps with Crohn's disease and it down-regulates TH17. So it has a lot of great functions. Low-dose notrexone, if it's given by mouth, the dose should be ramped up. In other words, You start with a lower dose and you increase it. So if it's given by mouth, the most common way is 1.5 milligram capsule at nighttime, 
for seven days. Then the next week, the patient takes two 1.5 milligram capsules, so they're on three milligrams. The third week, they take three, so they're on 4.5 milligrams. And then after that, the prescription is written for one single 4.5 milligram. LDN is compounded so that the patient can have the perfect dose. In large doses, naltrexone is used for drug overdoses and baby doses for inflammation. There's now even micro doses, smaller doses, and we can now have LDN compounded and put on the skin. And the dosage for the skin, otherwise known as transdermal application, is most commonly 4.5 milligrams. Now, this sounds like the panacea for everything, right? It is important when we talk about things like low-dose naltrexone that we do look at potential side effects. So potential long-term side effects, possible liver and kidney toxicity. Some people may build up a tolerance to it. Haven't really seen it yet, but that can happen to any drug. There are counterindications. You can't take LTN if you have ingested a lot of alcohol or if you had recurrent or current opioid use, because you'll get a reaction. If you have acute hepatitis or liver failure, then LDN is not for you. But everything we've talked about so far today builds the immune system, decreases inflammation, and LDN does both of those things with one drug. So it does balance the system. We can use it to build the immune system. We can also use LDN if the immune system is overstimulated with an autoimmune disease. I'd love LDN. Wow, that was fantastic. And of course, everybody, like you say, is talking about inflammation and sugar is similar to gluten. If you actually are buying food, if you look on the labels, on tins or packets or whatever it may be, nine times out of ten, there's gluten and there's also sugar, isn't there? There is. It's amazing. It gets hidden away in the package. So I actually take out my reading glasses and read the packages in the store. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, when I went gluten-free, it was so difficult. It took me so long because I was reading absolutely everything. And the only sure way of making sure you don't have any gluten or sugar is by buying, you know, fresh meat, vegetables and cooking it yourself and being careful with, um, as you said, dressings have sugar in. You know, it's making things yourself or really really being very very careful but you learn after a while what it is you can buy and, and what you can't so it's not horrendous every time you shop is it it's not it's really not it's like i have a reaction to shellfish i can't eat lobster shrimp etc because i will start getting short of breath i can get a rash and i can actually die if i eat shellfish at first it was really hard when I looked at shellfish. Now, after 10 years, it doesn't faze me in the least. Mm. And the same thing happens with gluten. Once you get used to not having it in the system, it's not a problem. Well, for me, I used to have to take um, an anti-acid medication at, at night. I, it was awful. I used to have such acid reflux. But going gluten-free that just went and I don't have to take the medication and it's fine. And if I eat out and I will say, you know, you know, I I can't have anything with gluten in and they'll come back and say, no, 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 there's no gluten in it. And I know about two o'clock in the morning, if there was any gluten in that food, the, the pain and the upset is terrible. So much so I can look at foods that other people are eating. Um, if it's not a gluten free lasagna or, I don't like fatty, sugary foods, but let's say a donut or something, if I if it was fresh and it smelled nice, 
it doesn't tempt me because I know that I will pay the price and it's just not worth it. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's well, I agree it's not. So on my birthday every year, I do eat a donut. But every year I say the same thing to myself. Why did I do that? <laughs> because I don't feel that good the next day. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's easier when you do react, isn't it? Because it's just like, no, you know, just, no, I don't want it. Thank you. And it's easy to say no. But the sugar thing is really hard, especially when you're gluten-free, dairy-free and sugar-free. When you eliminate those three things out of your diet, it's difficult. And, of course, you've got your natural sugars, so you can't have too much fruit juice um, and very ripe bananas, etc., because then you're still getting high healthy sugars, but you can overdo it, like you were saying. It's moderation, isn't it? It is. Moderation is the key to health. So like this morning, I had blackberries with my breakfast. I had um, some nuts, and today it was a pecans, and I had blackberries. So I had some protein with my carb, which was the blackberries, but that will be the only fruit I have today. When I go on to lunch, then I'll have a salad or something else without fruit in it, because you're right, you can get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. So when you tell your patients when they come to you and obviously have gut issues. How do you go about tackling a patient who doesn't have regular bowel movements, who has got the bloating and the gas and pains? What's the first steps you take? Well, a lot of it depends on really how bad the symptoms are and how much the patient is willing to do. The best scenario, of course, is to do a gut health test where we can actually measure and then scientifically be able to determine, do they need digestive enzymes? Do they need probiotics? I think everybody needs probiotics, but we can actually prove that. Do they have an infection? Are they low in short chain fatty acids, et cetera? And now there's newer testing on where we can do genomic testing. We can actually determine, looking at the genomes, what particular probiotic is best for you. So every year more comes out about the gut. I love talking about hormones. It's one of my very favorite things to discuss. But if you ask me, is it more important to have a healthy gut or more important to be hormonally found? I'll tell you, I don't know. Interesting, though, when you look at a gut that's not healthy, you have inflammation. Believe it or not, when you look at hormones, people may not realize that estrogen deficiency in patients causes inflammation. Testosterone deficiency in men causes inflammation. Low DHEA, which makes estrogen and testosterone, causes inflammation. Cortisol, as we mentioned, the stress hormone, if it's not normal, causes inflammation. Melatonin, thyroid, all of these have an inflammatory component if people are not hormonally balanced. So both of those things are key for the patient to be healthy and to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, having mentioned all of that, it would make it seem as though nine out of ten people at least will have high levels of inflammation of some kind or another with the way in which oh, we absolutely. live these days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's the reason why I do use LDN so much in my practice. And I love teaching about it when I teach because I do use LDN for all of my patients that have an autoimmune disease. When people have gained weight, it's inflammatory. So I use it for weight loss, all forms of memory loss or inflammatory in nature, Alzheimer's or not. So to prevent memory loss, treat memory loss, LDN is a great resource and for many other things as well. Mm -hmm. It always reminds me of, you know, living, you know, unhealthily. It's a bit like 
we call it the elastic band. You could probably call it a rubber band where you can stretch it and it goes back, stretch it and it goes back. Keep pulling it and pulling it and then one day it snaps. <laughs> and that seems to be what happens with health. You know, you can keep abusing your body for a while and then one day you, you pay the penalty. Well, you do. You absolutely do. So when you ask me, are there three things that every patient in the world should be on? Yes, there are. Probiotics, a multivitamin, both are key, and omega-3 fatty acids, otherwise known as fish oil, because it's anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. But because so many people are inflamed now, we do need to add prescription low-dose naltrexone to many of these patients to maintain optimal health. Well, we've actually run out of time. It was wonderful listening to you. You always have so much good advice. And we'll have to have you back again. I would love to. And I really do appreciate the invitation. Low-dose naltrexone decreases inflammation. We want people to be healthy both from the immune system viewpoint and have the right amount of inflammation. Remember, a small amount of inflammation heals. So if you fall down and you sprain your ankle, it becomes inflamed, it sets up a healing process. Too much inflammation is pathologic. Thank you so much for the opportunity today to be able to speak on low-dose naltrexone. Well, thank you very much for having joined us. This show is sponsored by Dixon's Chemist, who are the experts in LDN and associated treatments in the UK. Dixon's Chemist are the most cost-effective for LDN in all forms within the UK and Europe, maintaining safety standards far in excess of what is required. Why would you choose to get your LDN from anywhere else? Call 0141 404 6545 today to speak to their LDN experts. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.